What up, players? It's Wobots Tay up in this mode. Today we're unboxing and building up a squad of Death Corps of Krieg infantrymen at ease. And this is a video, appreciation video, for a July painting challenge participant who you remember as Telebraus, and now he is War Chef, War Chef, War Chef Andy. So, great guy, his Death Corps of Krieg project along with War Tigers just fantastic so thanks to them and i'll include information in the links to get to their channel or to get to telebrouse's channel war chef war chef andy's that's hard to say but war chef so let's take a look at what you get in the pack i had to actually clean and uh, separate everything when i build up my models like this especially models that are so fiddly as the death core of krieg i like to keep everything organized so i've got the bodies up here extra bits over here grenades extra guns, bayonets, and the uh, weapons and arms. I like to separate them. Right hand, right arm, left arm. Backpacks down here and extra packs. These are so fiddly. Look at, look at these packs. They're so fiddly. Ammo pouches. They're so tiny and uh, they all come kind of like attached to the grenades and um, you have to really get in there and, and clip them. So I don't even know how I'm going to glue them together, but I am going to not. I'm going to use some secret weapon bases, the trench works bases. So you don't really need to see. I guess what what, what can I show you? There's one pair of arms here holding a las gun. There's a commander's or a sergeant's arm holding a power sword, and you've got one with a flamer right there. The rest are arms either holding or or slung las guns. And this side is, yeah, kind of the same thing. So I'm going to be looking at the Forge World website to check to make sure that the poses are right. But let's take a look at the most interesting part, I think, are the torsos, or the bodies. So these always interested me, these, these Death Corps of Krieg models, the ones that are at ease, because they're standing up straight. They're perfect for a, a tutorial. They're standing up straight almost as if they're getting ready for inspection or getting ready to on a Valkyrie but they're not they don't look like they're in a war zone at all so perfect for having at the back to camp objectives or if you're just tired of painting if you're just tired of painting your Death Corps of Krieg crouched over and running which a lot of them look like to me the advancing ones do but they're all kind of the same but their heads are tilted in different directions they're all standing up straight but they're all looking in different directions some of their heads are tilted back like they're looking up and some of them are just to the side like this fellow here and just beautiful beautiful sculpts if we want to look at what each model looks like you've got their gas mask characteristic of all the death Corps of Krieg their helmets the straps on the back very German World War II World War One with the with the great coats and in the front they've got a little I think it's the pouch for their respirator. But some of them are open and you see that they have little little dials and kind of meters, readings. So we're gonna do a little time lapse now and put these all together and I'll talk about the, the difficulties and uh, my experiment experience gluing all these guys up. So stay tuned for that. All right, so right off the bat, and I'm gonna keep saying it, these models are very fiddly. And I mean, you can tell just by looking at them, the packs, the uh, extra las gun packs, the uh, grenades especially are gonna be really hard. So what I decided to do early on was to put a little bit of Vallejo plastic putty down on my guys first. So here I'm testing it out with the backpacks. And then I'm adding a little bit of super glue and that really strengthens the bond. I mean, even after you wash your resin models, which you should always do, you should always always wash your Forge World or any resin model with warm water and soap. Dishwashing soap, hand soap, uh, both of those have worked for me, but um, it gets the mold release agent off and it allows the resin to stick to, uh, the resin pieces to stick better. And uh, even better than that, though, is when you have some Vallejo plastic putty 
and so that's what I've been using. You can see me adding it first before I add on the super glue. Whatever I do when I'm gluing things on or the major pieces, I don't use the plastic putty with the grenades or the or the weapon packs, but most of the big pieces, arms, the uh, feet to the bases, I use the plastic putty because it just makes it so much easier. The super glue needs a little bit of while, a little while to, to stick and solidify, so. So having that plastic putty really helps you out. These bases that I'm using, I'm planning to do a little unboxing for them. They're fantastic. They're from Secret Weapon Miniatures and they are the trench work spaces. Some of them are a little bit, the uh, the one that's just kind of like bumpy dirt and gravel, it's a little bit hard to work with because these models are so, have such a small surface area and these ones in particular, the infantry squad that's at ease had their, has the two feet very close together. So it's hard because the the surface area of the bases are a little bit bumpy and uneven. So you see most of the va the bases for secret weapon miniatures have this kind of wooden planking, like the bottom of a trench work system, and that really works well for these. But uh, if my models had their feet spaced out or spread open, then it would have been a little bit easier to, to ground them. It's just because they're so close together, it works a lot better on these, these planked bases there. Yeah, so you definitely want to be careful when you're cleaning them, especially when you're going for the flash and the mold lines. These models, Forge World especially, are so... the resin is, is easy to, you know, get a little bit over zealous and over anxious and just kind of clip the wrong pieces off or, or s scrape them a little bit too fine. But there you see a little bit of an uneven base there. It looks like there is some craters in front of it. So I just decided to put my guy on the back of the base instead of at the center, which is okay because when you're measuring blast weapons and flame template, any kind of template weapons, you're measuring to see if the base gets hit, not the actual model itself. So for some of these, like this, all, all of these uneven dirt and trench works ones, I in the trench set, I kind of put them at the back. Uh, Vallejo Plastic Putty works really great if you have Milliput or Green Stuff, that works too. And some of these models, I mean, they look really just so, they have so much character. Some of them, they're putting the, ba the bayonets on. Some of them looks like they're just holding them at ease and they're just standing around. And really, you can choose to decide what your specific model is doing because their focus is all different. Some of their heads, because they're looking up or down or to the side, makes a lot more sense that they're just kind of lounging up around while some of them really do look like they are focusing on their uh, fixing their bayonets or getting their knives ready and here's my commander I decided to have him with his um, power sword flung over his shoulder and his other arm and a fist going uh, fist pumping the air like yeah I don't even know why that arm looks like that, but I guess it's supposed to be, maybe look like it's holding his belt, like very arrogantly, and I decided that it was a little bit more fun to have him just pumping the air. And this is my last guy. So I think I did all the, oops. I think I did all of the affixing of the, the grenades and the little, little bits after these. So, yep, a little bit of, a little bit of super glue down the side and uh, you add the little entrenching tools and the bayonets. I tried to make sure that some of these entrenching tools don't come with bayonets because obviously the model is holding them. So if um, one of the models had a bayonet like he was holding it, like he was fixing it to the front of his las gun, then I decided to use just the shovel entrenching tool. And now I'm going for the little grenade pa grenades and the little ammo packs and I found that using a toothpick is super helpful. Put a dollop of glue there as super glue and then just one by one um, right on the belt where there's a lot of surface area. Grenade and then ammo pack. Very helpful, very easy and I uh, hope this is a help helpful little look at these models for you guys because they look so great but they're fiddly 
as you can see, the sword is kind of bent. You gotta watch out for some bent weapons. And um, yeah, just have fun with them. And I'm sure they will look great for you as well as, as well as they do for me. And there you have it, players. Look at that. There's my assembled guys all put together, ready for painting. So hopefully I went over everything in the little time lapse there. But just to rein reinstate or restate that the fiddliness of the ammo pouches, the little bits and pieces, and the um, what's it called, the trenching and trenching tools, with the bayonets, make these kits very intimidating for new gamers, hobbyists, or hobbyists who don't have, sh who, who who don't have, I guess, steady hands, maybe shaky fingers and stuff, and uh, are not using with used to working with such small fiddly bits but they do look fantastic amazing I like these guys standing upright very proud and uh, yeah go death core of Creed they look fantastic so thanks for watching don't forget again visit Warchef Andy's YouTube page tell him I sent you and thanks for watching stay tuned for more